Our relationship with USA Hockey One has, has been outstanding. And to have four of our players get the call this year, and even in these crazy times, to represent their country, play in the Olympics, just such a special moment for our program. You know, I think just as, as far as looking at Gopher Hockey in general, the tradition that we have here, but be showcased on, you know, Olympic stage, representing our country, and, and to always have a, a member of every Olympic year is pretty impressive. For me personally, like growing up here in Minnesota, the Miracle on Ice team and USA Hockey in general was really something that I strove for, you know, um, trying to, to mimic plays or players like Neil Broughton. That's definitely something that I always had a dream of wanting to do someday was wear the red, white, and blue. And I think for me personally, my Olympic experience uh, was a long time coming. Being able to go to Torino as a member of the taxi squad and, and not being able to play and then breaking my forearm to go to Vancouver uh, when they won the, the silver medal was, was heartbreaking for me. It was bittersweet, obviously. It was happy for the guy, but also for, for, for me, the dream really hadn't come true yet. So being able to participate in Sochi and stand on the blue line and hear the national anthem and play. All my family members that came over was really an emotional time for me and something that I'll never forget. At the collegiate level, it, it, a lot of it's all tied back to Herb Brooks. You know, he's one of the greatest coaches of all time here at the University of Minnesota, but he was for the state of Minnesota and the hockey players in the state of Minnesota. And, you know, everything's going to always be tied to 1980, the gold medal team. And for another generation, 1960, that gold medal team, University of Minnesota Gopher athletes who just played such great roles in the history of the Olympics.